hello everyone welcome back so now we will talk about moments so it is again a very interesting topic which we will see but before going to all these formulas which you don't really have to worry about i will take an example and i will show you uh, what is the need of it so here i have few data points which is 4 6 6 9 and 10 so if i want to see in general how much these points are deviating from zero so what i can simply do is i will take these uh, values and i will sum them up and uh, i will take average of them so right now we have five data points so this is 35 by 5 which is 7 so i can say that in general all these data points are deviating from 0 by 7 so that is what i can say but uh, what if i have some other data points so let me draw uh, those data points so now i have another data set where i have all the data points which are equal to 7 so if i try to take a mean of these it will again be 7 so you can see the data points are very different but when i'm trying to see their distance from 0 it is coming uh, same so both are exactly same so even though the data set is very different we are getting same mean so it does not actually tell us the distribution or how the data is distributed so that is there but now you might ask why zero so there is no specific reason uh, for zero it's just a reference point you can take any reference point so for zero as a reference point we can see that our data is dispersed but then both the data set that we have here they are giving same values so what we can now do is we can take a square of the distance so in this case we can take a square of 4 square of 6 square of 6 square of 9 square of 10 and then we can take an average and here we can take uh, 7 square uh, 5 times and then we divide it by 5 so that will be our um, distance and this time it will be different but now you will say that okay i don't want to always see the distance from uh, zero but i want it to see let's say from mean so if we take our mean in this case we have our mean as seven so that will become our variance formula which you can see here so our second moment is variance and the first moment which we had calculated was nothing but mean now if we move a little bit further and that's why it is uh, written here as centered because now we are taking the distance from mean and not from a zero reference so if you are just a little bit confused if you take your mean as zero it will be essentially become the same formula so it's just that for uh, third moment it is called as skewness we have seen it in our past videos and the fourth moment is called kurtosis but to go to skewness and kurtosis we need to standardize our data so here we are standardizing using our standard deviation so that's what we are doing here we have seen skewness and you should also notice here that i am using mu and uh, small sigma so we are calculating for population and not for standard deviation for standard deviation the, com uh, the formula gets a little bit complex so i will show you the formula as well if you are interested but you don't really need to remember that formula you can use different packages like uh, scipy which will do the heavy lifting for you but just to understand uh, we have already understood about uh, skewness we will today understand a bit about uh, kurtosis so it was a debate long time ago that kurtosis is a measurement of uh, peakedness of your data so if a data set is uh, or if the distribution is something like this it will have a higher uh, peakedness but if a data set is something like this it will have a lesser peakedness uh, but that is not the case it's actually it actually tells you how much data is there in the tail so that's what it tells you if you see this denominator closely it is nothing but square of variance so we all know that the formula for variance is nothing but which we have actually written here as well and now we are taking square of it so this is in the denominator in numerator we have to the power 4 and this is the summation and we are dividing it by 
the number of values. So you can see here that we are taking a distance of a data point from the mean and it is to the power 4. So if a data point is actually quite far, if this is the distribution, if a data point is quite far from the mean, it will have some distance and if we take the power of it, it will become even larger. But we don't have anything in denominator to compensate for that. So if there are a lot of data points which are in the tail this value will grow quite fast and it has nothing to do with the data points which are very close to your mean so if data points are very close to your mean it is not going to affect too much uh, to this particular value and it is not going to explode uh, too much so this will give you an intu intuitive understanding why kurtosis is not a measure of peakiness but it is a measure of uh, uh, how much data is there in tail so I hope this makes more sense. Now let me show you some of the different distributions and their kurtosis values. So this image or plot I have taken from Wikipedia. So here we have a lot of different distributions. So you can see here the red one where we have a lot of data points very close to our mean and very less data point in the tail section. And hence we have a kurtosis value of 3. It is actually excess kurtosis because a kurtosis value uh, ranges from 1 to infinity and for normal distribution it's actually 3. So to make it 0 we do kurtosis minus 3 so that is excess 3. So here whatever values we are saying it's excess 3 and not at the actual kurtosis values. So for uh, Laplacian distribution we have 3. For now on I will just say kurtosis values and you should just understand it as excess kurtosis. Uh, for uh, hyperbolic secant distribution we have kurtosis value as 2 and you can see that this one is a little bit fatter as compared to our Laplacian distribution and if the tail starts to get even fatter for green it's 1.2 uh, which is our log distribution for normal it is much more fatter than our all the previous three distributions and the value is actually 0 and so on and so forth. So by looking at this particular plot, you will get a very good understanding about how the value of kurtosis changes. Now you might ask what could be the practical example of kurtosis. So it is not being used quite a lot as a data scientist, but uh, if you are working in signal processing, you might want to see whether your signal is good or not. So as a signal quality index, you can use kurtosis. In financial analysis, most of the times, people assume that a data set is normally distributed and uh, that's where they sometimes miss the fact that there are data points which are in the tail and uh, if there are lots and lots of data points which are in the tail it could lead to a financial disaster and this was one of the reasons which led to the financial crashes of uh, 2008 which you might have known if you don't it's a it's a good case study which you should actually watch so yeah that is the importance of uh, kurtosis now let me take you to the notebook and show you how you can actually find kurtosis but before that let me also show you the formula for finding kurtosis for sample i've shown you for population but not for sample so just to show you it's not like you'll have to remember them so here you can see the formula for sample skewness and here is the formula for sample kurtosis so you can see the formula becomes quite complicated because of degree of freedom and things like that so you don't really have to worry about this all the packages which we are going to use they use this particular formula under the hood so the complexity of the formula is being taken care of by different packages so now let me take you to our notebook and uh, show you how you can actually find kurtosis values how you can actually find skewness using scipy package here you have a skew function and we will be using kurtosis today so just to show you here you can see that age was negatively skewed and also when we calculate the skewness value it is coming as negative and uh, i had also shown you nox which was positively skewed and the value you can actually see here is positive so that's how you can actually calculate uh, skewness now for kurtosis 
I wanted to show you that normal distribution has kurtosis value as zero or very close to zero. It is randomly generated. So you can see here the value is very close to zero. And uh, if you try to plot other different uh, distributions, it will have different kurtosis value. So that can again be a good exercise for you. And uh, yeah, you can see here that I'm using kurtosis function and I'm just passing in my data and it is printing that particular kurtosis value. So that's how you can simply calculate the kurtosis value. And uh, generally speaking, the kurtosis value ranging from minus two to two is acceptable. So that is the valid range which you can actually examine. So again, uh, for task, what you have to do is I have given different steps. So you will just have to follow these steps. You need to generate 10,000 normally distributed data points. So for that, you can simply do this. And here, instead of 1000, you can do 10,000. If you want to change uh, mean and uh, standard deviation, you can change that as well. So that is totally up to you. Now from that population, you will have to uh, generate a sample. So what you can do is I have shown you how you can actually generate sample in previous videos. So you can use that. But I think in that I was using pandas. So you can also use NumPy to generate samples. So for that you need to Google. And uh, Googling is again something which you need to learn. And it's a very good skill to have. Now after that you will have to plot each and every sample of different sizes and you will have to calculate the kurtosis and you have to print them in this format so that you can actually see them side by side and you need to then after that you need to provide your observation what can you observe based on sample size whether your uh, based on sample size and based on the shape of your uh, distribution how the kurtosis value is changing so that is the task i hope you found this to be helpful this is it for this video hope to see you in the next one bye happy learning